Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another viewer requested fundamental analysis video. So, guys, let's spin the wheel to see what stock we are going to analyze today from a fundamental perspective. So, let's figure this out. And we got the company Civi. Now this company was brought up by, if I'm not mistaken, Anthony Brown. So here's the comment where he pretty much recommended this. So let's take a look at this company guys from a fundamental lens and see if the current share price, this is looking like a buy. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. All right, everybody. So we are here at their website. And first things first, I believe that this is an energy company. Now, I know that's kind of surprising to see that seeing that right here it says colorado's first carbon neutral energy producer so you know that's it is what it is but i love my energy company guys overall like i really do love my energy companies i mean if you guys have been around on the channel you all know that my best position to date it is none other than chevron i bought that thing at 100 bucks and you know it's been paying dividends at a great great rate and on top of that because of the massive demand for oil i'm up like to like six thousand seven thousand dollars and at one point it was up to ten thousand dollars it was absolutely crazy so love my energy companies that doesn't necessarily mean though that all of them are great so let's take a look at this one because i have never heard of this company before so let's take a look at what they actually do looking at the company profile we can see civitas resources inc an exploration and production company focuses on the acquisition development and production of oil and natural gas in the rocky mountain region okay so the midwest i love the midwest primarily in the Wattenberg field of Denver, Julesburg Basin of Colorado. The company was formerly known as Bonanza Creek Energy Inc. Civitas Resources Inc. was founded in 1989 and is based in Denver, Colorado. So they, they're very, very new. Honestly, they're very, very new. By the looks of it, focuses on the acquisition, development, and production of oil and natural gas. Very, very interesting to know. I don't necessarily know what they mean by the acquisition, right? Like, do they just buy... Uh, other companies is is that their whole business like just acquire other companies or what I'm not really sure about that if you guys could tell me please let me know in the comment section below now before we move on into their earnings summary here is a couple articles that came up during their earnings which by the way happened at, at the beginning of this month but i'm going to show you guys these two articles first of all civitas resources predicted to pay over seven dollar per share in 2023 dividends now this is not a thing that's going to happen or at least nothing that has happened but it says over here civitas is predicted to pay seven dollar and 45 cents per share in total 2023 dividends some of its 2023 dividend payments benefit from strong free cash flow in mid 2022 man is that true civitas is predicted to generate 725 million in free cash flow at the current of 2023 strip it is drawing down some ducs during 2023 reducing its cap x requirements and recent world performance looks to be pretty solid now I don't know if this is going to occur, guys. However, we are going to take a look at their fundamentals in just one second. Another article that I want to show you guys as well is Civitas Resources jumps to three-month high in $1 billion stock buyback plan, which I already took a look at their shares of standing, guys. Massive, massive dilution as of, I believe, two years ago. We're going to take a look at that later. But yeah, the fact that we had a massive stock dilution, now they're saying we're going to plan to buy back a billion dollars worth of stock. You know what? That's actually fairly good. It's fairly, fairly good in my personal opinion. We got over here. So if it does resources, and by the way, this article was on February 23rd. Okay, so it's been quite some time. But we got over here. So if it does resources surges to its highest in three months. 12.7%. This thing rose 12.7% on Thursday, trading after reporting mixed Q4 results, but announcing plans to buy back as much as a billion dollars worth of common stock. Wow. The company also approved a dividend of $2.50 per share, reflecting a combination of the 50 cents quarterly basis dividends and a $1.65 quarterly variable dividend now here's the thing though this one was as february however we just had their earnings as of may and unfortunately i don't i think that they cut this dividend because approved the two dollars and 15 dividends per share however if we take a look at their dividends we can see that the annual payout is now two dollars not two dollars and fifty so i don't necessarily know what happened here um uh, yeah it's just weird but i mean it says over here reflecting the combination of 
a 50 cent quarterly basis dividend and a dollar 65 quarterly oh I'm, yeah I'm, I'm not really certain what's going on here because you guys are seeing this right here right you guys are seeing it the fact that you know annual payout is two dollars per share is 50 cents so i'm not i'm not sure maybe they did they increase it? I'm not fully sure. But we'll take a look at this when we get to the dividend part. But anyways, those are just two stories I figure that you guys may want to see. Now, coming into their earnings, we can see that they did announce on May 3rd, $2.21 for the EPS normalized actual, beat by 19 cents. EPS gap actual, $2.46 which is a beat by 54 cents revenue, $656.02 million, which is a beat by $28.2 million. Jumping now into the calculator, we got the ticker for CIVI, market cap of $5.63 billion, a PE of 4.38 with a current share price of $69.95. If we take a look at this current price, guys, on the one year, it is barely up at 2.33. Year to date, it is up a whopping 30.83%. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. The lowest point that this was this year, $53.47. In fact, in the 52 week, this thing was as low as $41.15. Right now, it is, well, as you guys saw, it is at around $69.95. However, you can see that the 52 week high it is $78.01. So, not close to 52 week highs but it's getting very very close to that now as i mentioned that they do pay out the dividend of two dollars which is a yield of almost three percent 2.86 to be exact a payout ratio of 56.07 no five-year CAGR with only one consecutive year of dividend payment let's take a look at the dividend history to see if this is consistent and by the looks of it guys let's see well they don't have five years worth of data which makes sense i mean we did read in their uh, summary that they did change their name so that may have something to do with this i'm not necessarily certain but as a matter of fact they did start paying as of june 13th 2021 so you can see we're on the max june 13 2021 and they have okay they have consistently increased it i'm not gonna say that they have not but actually no right there they did yeah, look at that. $1.65 to $1.62. So yeah, they did cut it, guys. They did cut it. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with this. They might actually lose the status of one dividend growth year. Anyways, the ex-dividend date on this dividend it is on June 14th, and the payout date will be on June 29th, and they pay their dividends quarterly. So depending on what we get, guys, this might be a pretty good opportunity to buy before the ex-dividend date. Coming back into the calculator, based off the current shares outstanding, they pay out, guys, $160.6 million in dividends every single year. And after this is paid out, in regards to their five-year average free cash flow, they're still left with almost $71 million. As of the last year's free cash flow, it is $963.5 million. These payout ratios are 14.3 for the last year's free cash flow and almost 70% for the five-year average. So... On the uh, five or average scale, they cannot afford this thing, but, you know, apparently uh, on the last year, they can. Now, these fundamentals are absolutely bonkers, and I'm going to show you guys, yeah, it's not going to be pretty. So, let's actually see their fundamentals. So, starting off with the net income, here we go. We got five years ago of 168.2 million with an M to one year ago of 1.25 billion with a b that is an increase of 642 percent guys you know i'm not a fan of outliers never i will never be a fan of outliers because they are not the end all be all i have some comments in a few videos saying like well yeah it's because they did this they did that so it's like right but that's not a tale of consistency, right? That is not a thing that is going to continue growing. In fact, I've analyzed several companies here on the channel already that have had two years of massive growth, like pretty consistently somewhat average from like five, four, and three years ago, or actually technically like five, four years ago, and then a massive spike three and two years ago, and then as of one year ago, it comes down. So, you know, that, that impacts the stock, right? That does impact the stock. So I'm looking at this massive rise when it comes to the net income. And by the way, we're going to see the exact same thing in the free cash flow and even the revenue. And I got to say, I don't like it. You can see here that they went down from five to four, from 168 to 67. And then they, you know, increased it a decent amount from four to two years ago. But overall, guys, I do not like that massive spike. So I'm going to have to give this thing at around like a 20%. And as I just mentioned, we're going to see the exact same thing when it comes to the free cash flow. Actually, the free cash flow is 
a little bit worse because uh, we got five years ago of negative $151 million to one year ago of $1.12 billion, increase of 845% with an average of $231.5 million. Again, very nice consistent increase from five to four to three to two years ago, even though five and four were in the negative. You know what? At least they're still increasing it. What I don't like is this. This right here, 122 million two years ago to 1.1 billion. Guys, it's absolutely ridiculous. So the fact of the matter is, is that they do have a few years of being negative, right? So I'm going to give this thing a 15% because, well, again, massive outlier. And again, two years of being negative, even though it is consistently increasing, it kind of just, just destroys it with this massive outlier. So yeah, it is what it is. Looking now at the revenue, once again, the massive outlier consists. We got five years ago of $276.7 million to one year ago of $3.8 billion. That is an increase of 1,270%, guys absolutely massive and this looks very very similar to that of the net income so i'm gonna give this thing i'm gonna give this thing a little bit higher i would say like a 25 percent overall assets minus liabilities now here's the thing when it comes to this one it is increasing however now the outlier year came two years ago you can see that from five to three years ago once again consistently increasing and then just a massive spike after that going from one billion dollars to 4.65 billion dollars now they did continue this from two to one year ago but as of today, you can see, well, actually, as of today, they're still kind of catching up to one year ago. So I don't necessarily know where this is going. So yeah, that's going to, this is actually a really difficult one to figure out. Average total assets, though, it is $5 billion. Average liabilities is $1.5 billion. Doing this difference, we get $3.4 billion. I'm going to give this thing a 50% because I have no idea where this is going in the slightest. Looking now into the cash flow minus the liabilities, this thing is all over the place. You can see here that from five to four to three years ago, very nice consistently decrease or I guess increasing it into the zero. In fact, they got really, really close three years ago. Two years ago, boom, instant collapse to negative two billion dollars. But they did bring it back up as of one year ago. So this is this is interesting. Now, one year ago is still way lower than the average of negative eight hundred and twenty six million dollars. But overall, we can do see that they do have a tendency to increase it. So I'm actually going to give this a fairly decent grade of, I would say, around like a 60 percent. Mainly because, again, consistently increasing it some areas here they do have the tendency to do that and on top of that and on top of that we see that right here as well too it's just that this massive collapse is not something i like to see and when it comes to the shares outstanding this is the one that i am going to be very very curious to see what in the world happens with this kind of news with the with, with the one billion dollar buyback because well um guys Five years ago of 20.5 million shares to 80.3 million shares. That is an increase of 292% on the five year. You can see that all of this happened three to two years ago. Pretty much what we saw, the exact same thing with this as well, even the assets minus liability. So very, very interesting to just see something happened two years ago that's definitely an issue so well actually i guess you could say the whole oil demand stuff right i guess you could say that but why did they increase shares right that's not something i understand now from previous year to the current year they did buy back around 5.64 percent going from 85.1 million to 80.3 but overall that's still a massive massive increase on the five year now the grade for this is a little bit weird because i don't know where this is going to go they did increase that dividend but then they cut it by a little bit. They are planning a $1 billion buyback, but my guess is if they are struggling to pay off that dividend or else why would they cut it back? They're going to say that this is going to happen too. So I'm going to give this guys a 50% because I just don't know what to put for this. I really do not know. And lastly, when it comes to the cash due coins, they currently hold $556 million with an average of $271.2 million. Now, when it comes to the overall grades, we gave the net income a 20%, free cash flow 15%, revenue 25%, assets minus liabilities 50%, cash flow minus liabilities 60%, shares of standing of 50%, overall grade of 31%. So as you guys can clearly see is that uh, they do have problems. Now, their problem mainly stems from the outliers, right? The outliers, which is not something I like because I just, it's not... It doesn't mean that they're going to continue it. Now, the assets minus liabilities, we did see that continuing, but we have yet to see anything regarding the 
profit metrics. So I'm going to give this a 31%. Again, you guys can give it your own grades and see where you land. And maybe down the line, this grade may, may be higher, but for all we know, it could also be lower. Now, let's come into the discounted free cash to see what we should pay for this company. Straight off the bat, this is looking ridiculous. $883, and not adjusting for debt to $1,772.71 adjusting for debt. Um, I This may be one, guys, that... The calculator may, may not work because of the massive outlier that happened one year ago. So we may have to take a look at the book value, but let's just entertain this for a little bit. We can see here that Seeking Alpha is saying that the growth forward is estimated 45.64%. I don't believe that. I'm going to go something along the lines of the sector median. I'm going to go at around 12%. So let's actually do that. Let's say at around 12% for the median. Let's say 15 for the highest and let's say 9 for the lowest. Now, the protected share buyback, I don't know. I don't know. Um, the problem is, is that they have issued a massive amount in the past five years. And again, this is looking into the next five years. So if they've issued around like 200 and something for in just five years, guys, I, I'm, I, me, what I would do is something along these lines. I would go for like negative 90, negative 198, sorry. Um, yeah, negative 198. Then let's go to, let's say negative, uh, let's say negative 195 and let's go to negative 192. So yeah, um, that's just what I would give it. I mean, I don't necessarily know if that's correct because I don't know where this is going. I really do not know where this is going when it comes to the shares outstanding. It looks like they've been buying back as of one year ago, but that's not enough data. But you can see here that based off of this, 263 to 333, not just seeing for debt, and 530 to 667, margin of safety of 510 15. We can see 450 to 634. Um, I don't believe this. I'm just, I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna be true with you guys. I don't believe these numbers because it doesn't make any sense. So let's take a look at the second best thing that we could do, and that is the book value and tangible book value per share. And by the looks of it, guys, the book value per share isn't looking too shabby. $63.54. You can see this has been consistently increasing at 51% in the past five years. Really, really nice. Now, looking at the tangible book value, once again, $63.54, pretty much in line with the book value. Now, what this is telling me is that, well, based on the book value basis, this is only a little bit bit overpriced only by 0.1 so yeah this might actually be a company that you might be willing to buy at this current moment now you guys saw the 52 week lows that are around 41 dollars well that may be an even better buy in the past year or so but as you can see a 63 dollars and 54 cents book value and a current share price of 69 dollars and 95 cents it's only slightly overpriced so do with that information as you will. Obviously, this is not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And I highly encourage everybody to take a look at their earnings, read the 10K, you know, read articles on it, bullish and bearish, and come up with your own, I guess, valuation for this company. It's very, very difficult. Now, I do want to promote something of mine, guys. I recently just made a music video for Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So if you guys want to see that, I am going to put the picture of it right now. So if you guys would like to see that, you know, make sure to go and watch it. Again, it's kind of like my side project. I, I, I like making music videos for like game music videos or animated music videos. So they don't really have a lot of promotions. I'm just going to promote myself here. And that is my second channel. So if you guys would like to check it out, please. The link will be also in the description below. So as I said, guys, not financial advice. So please do your own due diligence, have these calculators, and of course, make your own assumptions. All right. So with that said, now let's move into this dividend. Seeing that they pay out almost 3% in dividends, putting in $5,725, this nets you $163.70. Not too shabby, though if you were to have bought this thing at around $41, which was pretty much the low, let's just say $45, which was the 52-week low, $254 in dividends. Not too shabby, guys, not too shabby. So it is what it is. But again, the book value it is saying that this is looking like a pretty good buy at the current moment. And when it comes to the options change, they really don't have much. You can see here that as of June 16th, well, first of all, they don't even have that much expiration. We got June 16th, June, June 21st, October 20th, and January 19th of 2024. So yeah, not a lot there, but you can see here that there really isn't anything when it comes to the puts or even the call. Actually, the call side look really, really good, though. Um, you know, $205 for $70, that's not looking too shabby. So if you bought this thing at $40 or around like 
or around $45 or so, you're pretty much making out if you were to do a covered call at $70 and it does get executed. So nonetheless, though, option chains not looking too good. Looking at the July 21st, this was looking actually a little bit better. You can see that. Wow, this is actually looking a whole lot better. Yeah, so you may want to do one for July if you are interested when it comes to these options. You can see the puts $135 for a strike of 60, which will get $10 away from this thing at, at 60 for what, two months or something like that? Uh, yeah, for about two months or so. And when it comes to the calls, $310, guys, for 70 and even $155 for 75. So not too shabby, not too shabby. Overall, when it comes to this company, thank you so much, Anthony, for this recommendation. I gotta say, I, I do like my old companies. I don't see anything wrong with this one aside from just the outliers. But then again, that's just me. But anyways, that pretty much is it for this video. Make sure to follow us on the new tech sites. Link is in the description below. So with that said, peace out and we'll see you all next time.